based on the very high security levels and the high compliance levels and the high security standards, privacy standards, and of course, responsible AI. That's a big difference between AI and responsible AI. So we're going to see a lot of conversations in the future. What is the difference, the difference here regarding ethics? Usually all my sessions are a full of live demos. Today it's going to be a little bit different because a lot of low copilot things are not available yet for public live demos. So I'm going to stay here with the slides. But, I, but anyway, I will show what I've taken out from the demos. So I've seen, of course, marketing videos, but I've also been to the MVP summit in Redmond where I've also seen copilot live. My name is Ragnar Heil. I'm yeah, my, a Microsoft MVP for M365 Apps and Services. Now coming to the year number six, I work at Renko as a Global Director of Partners and Alliances. Um, if you're wondering what the castle is below the MP MVP logo, that's the castle um, where I just live two streets away between Frankfurt and Hanover in Germany. As MVP, I'm sharing knowledge, so my heart is definitely beating. Uh, meeting for everything regarding knowledge sharing. So Ragnar Heidi is my blog post. I've got the Alex and Ragnar show with just bi-weekly hybrid work news and teams show. Alex Eggers was also here a few hours ago with this updates. I also worked at Microsoft for 11 years. That's the Microsoft Munich office. Yeah. And I'm part of the Viva Explorer community. That's a community of MVPs who are focused on Viva to share everything and explore and discover everything new around Viva. And the first thing is a little bit of clarification for, for co-pilot and autopilot because the naming is made on a very, um, it's, it's chosen because Microsoft doesn't want to call it autopilot because it is not going to make a human being redundant. We need, in the days and the age of the AI, we are going to need human beings. So it's not an autopilot, it's a co-pilot, which is helpful for us. But there's still a wonderful human being who is tr driving the, the car and using it. So it's an assistant. It's a tool and not an autopilot. That's very important. On the other hand, it's, it's, it's very um, important to see that it's nothing completely new so it's it's a combination of large language models LLM, llm and also the microsoft graph your data in your tenant and then the microsoft 365 apps which you already know starting from word excel powerpoint up to sharepoint onedrive teams up to the power platform and many other new applications let's say loop for one example and the co-pilot experience is using your data, but it's not trained with your data. So, so that's very important. It is using the Microsoft Graph, which in your data, but it's not trained with, but it's not trained with customer data. So that's a very important thing. So everything is really based on the very high security levels and the high compliance levels and the high security standards, privacy standards. And of course, responsible AI. That's a big difference between AI and responsible AI. So we're going to see a lot of conversations in the future. What is the difference, the difference here regarding ethics? So let's start with the first use case here, co-pilot in Teams. Um, the interesting thing is that here, one use case for the usage of co-pilot in, in, in Teams is an integration with an app from Atlassian, Jira. I don't know if you have ever used Jira in the past, maybe you work in, in customer support, um, then this could be helpful for you. So you would be instead of Teams, you would open a Teams chat, you would go to your Jira application and somebody is going to explain you um, an issue, an error, a bug. And then you would maybe ask them, hey, could you please tell me the steps how to reproduce this bug? And then somebody is, is, is uh, telling you it and then based on this information, it can automatically fill a, a ticket. So tickets always have things like a description and a summary and then some severity, 
um, prioritization. And here, everything is going to be filled out using Copilot. And then at the end, it's going to create an Atlassian Jira ticket. That can definitely save time and also make sure that you have a proper description because sometimes if you know Jira, sometimes the descriptions are a little bit lousy and not so helpful. So here we are going to have an easier way to have a better, more helpful description to reproduce it. And then it can solve the issue and the bug um, faster and quicker. Use case um, number one would be, uh, uh, sorry, use case number two would be a co-pilot experience in Word. In Word, that it's it's very interesting that Microsoft shared here not only the typical JetGPT use case where it's going to write, uh, let's say, content, it's going to write a blog post, it's going to write a letter, it's going to write something long based on a short prompt. It's also going to summarize, so it's going to tweak. So let's say if if Copilot is creating something too long for you, then you can say, okay, please, could you please summarize it? Uh, I have to do a speech and the public speech should not be longer than three minutes. Please make it shorter. So that's also very helpful, not only to, to give a prompt create, and, and create long text, it helps you to create it uh, shorter based on your audience. You can always say, my audience here for this speech are six-year-old uh, primary school children or 80-year-old uh, people in a, in a um, senior residency. So you just define the audience and then you, you get the right um, output. And you can also ask some unexpected things like what time uh, is, does, it, does it cover if I read it loud? And then it will take, okay, this text is going to, to take you seven minutes if you would read it loud. So really helpful. So not only content creation, but also tweaking it and make it um, really, yeah. And to, and to find the right matching to your audience and to your time, what you have. Another use case here in Teams, uh, that's something what, uh, what we can already use now. So that's one of the few use cases which are available right now. If you have Teams Premium, so that's one of the requirements, you need to have Teams Premium, and then you would have Intelligent Meeting Recap which is a summary, a summary of your, of your meeting. If, if this is installed, if Teams Premium License is added, then a summary will be done. And the most helpful thing is there are topics generated and also people are mentioned. So in case um, you are on vacation, let's say you are three weeks on vacation and people are mentioning you while you're away, they're mentioning you in a meeting. And then after it, when you come back from vacation, you don't want to hear and you don't want to listen to all the recorded meetings. But you can you can find out where you were mentioned because this is going to maybe generate an action item for you. So you just scan the recorded meetings of the last three weeks when you were on the beach. You just scan it for action items where you are involved. Schön, dass du bis hierher geschaut hast. Wenn du das Video weiterschauen möchtest, dann melde dich einfach auf unserer Lernplattform M365 Circle an. In der Videobeschreibung findest du den Link, wie du da hinkommst und du kannst dir natürlich auch für eine unserer weiteren Summits, M365 Summits, ein Ticket holen, kostenfrei oder du unterstützt uns mit einem Supporter-Ticket. Also, klick auf den Link in der Beschreibung und schau dir das vollständige Video an. Wenn du uns weiter noch unterstützen möchtest, dann kannst du auch unseren YouTube-Channel abonnieren und am besten noch die Glocke aktivieren. Und vielen Dank, dass du bei der nächsten Summit auch mit dabei bist.